and welcome to the Disney News Show. Here's your host, Corella's Fur Coat. Yes, this is the Disney News Show. I am Joe Worthington, aka Corella's Fur Coat, and this is episode 57 for Sunday the 9th of December 2012. Now, I hope you've all had a great week. This week in the world of Disney has been a really big week, especially at Walt Disney World. I've got all the news to come, but if you've been watching the show or following Disney news over the past few weeks, you'll know that this week was the grand opening, finally, of New Fansland and also Test Track. So I've got all the news from those two openings to come. Um, well, first up in the show, as always, we will be starting with the Walt Disney World news. But yeah, so I hope you've all had a fantastic week. Um, this week I did do a video, as promised, my Disney Classics DVD Collection overview um, for for this year. Um, I did that uh, on Wednesday, so go and check that out if you haven't seen it. I've had some great feedback already from that one. I um, really enjoyed showing you guys um, my collection. It's all there, up on the shelf. All them DVDs I've shown you um, in that video. Go and click the link down below if you've not seen it. Uh, maybe at the end, of the end of this video, go and have a look at my complete collection, um, all, the vid all the DVDs I have up to now. A Blu-ray collection will be coming, well, a video will be coming very, very soon. Um, not sure when, I don't think it'll be this week, but it will be soon. Um, I've had people requesting that now. Um, all my Blu-rays, which are on this side of the shelf, um, they will be coming your way very soon as well. But yeah, so um, that is in terms of videos this week. Um, I've not really picked up too much stuff, um, Disney-wise, this week. Um, just getting ready for Christmas, as always. Christmas decorations are now up in my house, um, and so we're getting very, very festive. I hope you guys are getting into the Christmas spirit. Disney is there already. Disney is going all out for Christmas, as I keep saying, every single week. But it just keeps getting better and better. I mean, this week we've had kind of um, more areas have been updated with... Christmas things. I mean, I've just seen some of the um, photos of Cars Land, what they're doing there at Disney California Adventure. That's looking fantastic. I mean, I think they've done a fantastic job there for their first Christmas of Cars Land. But, um, but yeah, so there we go. That is um, just a bit of um, starting off news there. But, as I said, lots of stuff going on in the world of, well, Walt Disney World this week. So, let's get started. And as I mentioned before, New Fans Land was officially opened this past Thursday, the 6th of December. And um, there was a ceremony, as you would expect, featuring Tom Staggs, the chairman of Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, Jennifer Goodwin from ABC's Once Upon a Time, and also Jordan Sparks, from, um, who apparently is from American Idol. Um, so yeah, they did a really nice ceremony. Um, there was kind of a ribbon-cutting thing in um, Newfoundland and then an actual um, big show at, uh, on the Castle Forecourt stage, um, which all the guests could, um, could go and watch. I thought it was really awesome. They kind of... Um, Ginny came and did a bit of um, a bit of a talk, and then after that, Jordan Sparks came out and she did a kind of medley of Disney songs with loads of Disney characters came out. I thought it was really, really nice, really, really great thing to do, and um, so yeah, great, great stuff there. Um, it was also nice to see um, Jody Benson, Paige O'Hara, um, and John Musker and Mon Clements were all there as well. Um, if you're a Disney um, fan, <laughs> then you'll probably know who those guys are um, from Disney classic Disney movies. Um, but yeah, so that is um, really, really cool. Also, one thing I did really like was that they included um, Dumbo, the character of Dumbo in this um, thing, because obviously Storybook Circus is now officially, officially open, um, you know, completely. I mean, it's been open for a while, Storybook Circus, but they included Dumbo in that, which was really nice. And we haven't seen the Dumbo um, character, the actual um, walk-around character, for a long time. And um, they did a great job, I think, um, of, of that costume, well, of, of that uh, character, and I thought it was really, really fantastic. So, um, there we go, that is that from um, from New Fansland. But also, um, something that I was really, really kind of blown away with um, was, if you've been following Disney Parks blog over the past few weeks, there's been kind of this um, this story about a dragon which is kind of um, from New Fansland, which is apparently returning for um, the grand opening. And on Wednesday night, this was, um, there's a surprise and stuff for all Magic Kingdom guests when this dragon was seen above Fansland, um, kind of swooping around in, in the dark. It was really fantastic. I mean, they did a fantastic job with that. It had had fire, it had everything. I mean, go and check out the video. I think I'll leave the video down below for you guys, but this was just awesome. And it does say that it was only going to be for, for one night only, which I think is a bit of a shame, really, because I think if Disney did that 
a lot more like every I don't know every so often they kind of got this dragon out. To be honest, with you, I don't think they will have spent all this time and effort on this dragon uh, if they were just going to use it for one night. So I really do think that we're going to be seeing this dragon a bit more. But we'll have to wait and see what Disney does with that. So yeah, that was on Wednesday night. Um, I thought it was interesting that it chose Wednesday to do that. Kind of the night before the grand opening. Um, and so that, that fantastic stuff there. I really, really enjoyed that. And I think that's just a, another way of showing how much Disney, how much thought has gone in. Um, Disney has put into this this whole opening. And I know that um, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train will not be opening until 2014, which is a bit of a shame really. It would have been nice for them um, to at least have got it open early next year, but it does look like it's going to be spectacular. They've been redone all the walls around the outside, they've got places you can peek in um, to the construction site, so it's fantastic stuff. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what is going to come more from Newfoundland over the coming weeks, months, years, whatever. Just fantastic stuff. So yeah, there we go, New Fantasyland officially opened now to all guests of the Magic Kingdom. Okay, moving over to Epcot now, and as I mentioned, another grand opening took place this week in Future World, and this was of course of the new test track presented by Chevrolet. And um, on hand for the opening ceremony were Meg Crofton, President of Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, Operations US and France, as well as Alan Bailey, the head of GM. And um, I'm really excited to see, um, to, well, to, to hear about what's been happening here at Test Track. I mean, the the update looks looks good. I mean, it's kind of it's a very more futuristic thing. I think it fits into future world a lot better now. Um, I loved the old Test Track. I thought it was incredible. And I've actually seen WDW Magic have done a comparison video of the two, um, the old Test Track and the new Test Track, and it's amazing to see. Um, how little it's actually changed. The track has not changed at all. And um, the actual things that happen, I know what you mean. Uh, uh, well, I know what I'm trying to say, you know, like the actual um, effects haven't changed a great deal. And um, so that that's that's pleasing to hear. Just, it just looks a lot different. It looks a lot very Tronish, if you know what I mean. Um, a very, very um, like, much like they're, they're appealing to the Tron fans out there. And uh, so that that is good for me. I think they've done. It's been a good decision. I mean, they did need to update Future World. They need to get some more futuristic kind of things into Future World, and they've done a great job here. And um, so yeah, fantastic, fantastic stuff um, there. And so yeah, go and check out that comparison video on www.magic.com. Um, obviously, a great site um, for all your latest Disney news as well. Um, there. And so, yeah, and as I'm just going to mention that on uh, hand at both of the opening ceremonies, um, New Fans and and uh, Test Track, we did have um, Talking Mickey Mouse, which I thought was great. I do love Talking Mickey Mouse, um, you know, who kind of moves his eyes at uh, opening clothes and then he interacts with the um, with the people who are talking. So I think it's fantastic and I would love to see him more in the parks and it's just great. I love it whenever they do, um, whenever they bring out Talking Mickey Mouse, and so this was really fantastic stuff. So, um, so yeah. yeah, we did have Tom Staggs and Meg Crofton at Walt Disney World that day. I mean, yeah, they, they obviously um, they were only allowed to do one, or, or they chose to only do one. I could imagine them fighting over who was going to do which one, you know, who was going to do New Fans Land and who was going to do Test Track. Um, so yeah, I can imagine them having a game of rock, paper, scissors or whatever to, to, to decide, but you know, um, Really good stuff. I mean, there we go. Uh, two grand openings this week at Walt Disney World. Okay, a bit of news now from Downtown Disney. And it was announced on Friday that Splitsville Bowling Alleys at Walt Disney World, uh, Walt Disney World's Downtown Disney, will be opening to guests on Wednesday, the 19th of December. And um, there have been previews happening this week. There was kind of the dedication ceremony happened, and it is now part open if you, if you want to put it like that, um, but open for official, uh, officially uh, on December 19th and um, this is going to be the world's largest split spill which I didn't know about that until um, only the other day and so I think it's awesome that this is this is coming to downtown Disney, it's going to, well, it's got the bowling, it's got um, dining, loads of dining options out here are going to be um, in Splitsville, as well as uh, shopping, all the entertainment kind of things that you would expect at, at a Splitsville um, 
will be will be taking place there. So um, great, great stuff. Yeah, just got the grand opening date of December nineteenth. Okay, um, one last little bit of news now from Walt Disney World, and the reopening date for the Courtyard Pool at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa has been pushed back to um, to next year, 2013, from this month. It was uh, supposed to be opening sometime this month, and it's been pushed back to early next year, probably January, February time. But um, I, it just, I don't think this is going to be such a big problem, but um, the pool has been closed since October um, this year, and so just must be running a bit behind schedule. But there we go. Grand Floridian, the Courtyard Pool will be opening early next year. And that is pretty much all of the Walt Disney World news for this week. Okay, so we're moving on to the movies news now. And a bit of interesting news to um, surface this week is that a deal has been made between Disney and Netflix for the pay TV rights to all Disney movies um, in the future. And this currently stands with stars and... Um, it's actually been the first time that a studio has made such a deal with an online streaming video provider. And so it's really interesting that Disney um, has decided to do this. And it won't actually take complete effect until 2016, but it means that from 2016 we'll be able to stream uh, Disney movies online only a few months after they have been in theatres, as well as many of the cast of titles, um, obviously the old classics, all that kind of stuff will be provided through Netflix. And um, I, I think this possibly is just the US, but Netflix is now here in the UK, and so I'm guessing we'll be seeing it there. But I've been hearing from, from sources that this is normally kind of um, reserved for uh, TV-operated companies such as HBO and um, that kind of stuff. But it's really interesting to hear what is happening there. And um, I don't really know too much about Netflix. I don't really know how it works, um, to be honest with you. But apparently it's it's online, kind of you stream your movies, your TV shows, that kind of stuff. And um, so yeah, and it's interesting to hear that Disney is going to be the first um, the first kind of company to kind of take this kind of deal with Netflix. And I'll bring you all the latest information as I hear it about this. But I thought that was just quite interesting. It kind of made big headlines this move, this news, and so I thought I'd best mention it here on the show. But there we go. Um, from 2016, we will be getting all the latest Disney movies through Netflix only a couple of months after they have been um, released in theatres. Interesting news there. Okay, um, next up, it looks as if Pixar are very close to announcing a title for their 2014 movie, which takes you inside the mind. And so, if you remember, this was kind of announced last August 2011, um, when Disney announced kind of some more of their titles. Um, and so 2014, especially that one that takes you inside the mind, and apparently it's going to be called The Inside Out. And um, this is not finalised, it's just a rumour, but um, I am very excited to hear that this may be coming um, soon. And so there we go. Um, possibly we'll be hearing a few more details, but recently John Lasseter, um, the big chief at Pixar, did um, kind of give a little synopsis of this movie, I'll just share it with you now. And he said, the emotions of this little girl are the characters and it takes place in the head of this little girl. And um, it shows how they control things um, that go on. So that is really interesting and that was kind of what we expected this to be. The emotions of the girl are the characters, we kind of, we're inside her head, that kind of stuff. And so I'm so interested in this movie. I think it's going to be a fantastic thing, I think. Um, it's going to be one of the most original movies that Disney has ever done, really. Um, although all their movies are very original, this one's kind of really out there. And I'm so excited to see um, to see what comes from this. And The Inside Out, good title? I think so. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a bit different, but um, that is Pixar. And there we go. So I will bring you more information as it comes, but there we go. Just kind of bear that in mind. It could be called The Inside Out, if um, if that is true. I hope it is. That that kind of um, that that kind of makes sense. And I would like to hear more about this movie. Of course, I would. Um, but we're not getting it till 2014. And there we go. So um, so yeah, possibly getting some more information about that very very soon. Okay, a couple more rumours actually now, and uh, rumours have surfaced this week about a sequel to Disney and Tim Burton's 2010 film, Alice in Wonderland. Now, Alice in Wonderland, 
what did fantastically well. It was an incredible movie that Disney and Tim Burton did um, a couple of years ago, and apparently they are looking to do a sequel. And um, this is only another rumour, but um, apparently Disney has hired uh, Linda Wolverton, um, who of course did um, the screen writing for Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, and is currently has currently done Maleficent, and so apparently she is on hand to write the movie. We do not know about anything else that is happening, but um, if she is on hand, if she has been hired by Disney, then that kind of shows that this is going to be going ahead. And um, it, as I said, it is unknown who else is involved. Will Tim Burton be involved? I think he will be. I think um, that if Disney is going to do a sequel, I don't think they would get away with, that, with doing it without Tim Burton, but it would be amazing if they managed to get the entire cast back together. I mean, that cast was just incredible, and to see who they're going to get is going to be... Um, if they do get it, it's going to be kind of... It's going to be interesting to see who they managed to get back. But um, Tim Burton doesn't often do sequels. He did the Batman sequels a while ago, but he hasn't done any sequels in a long time, and um, let's just wait and see. I will bring you more information, as I always do. Um, if anything does come into fruition about um, Alice in Wonderland, there we go. I haven't heard anything until this week, but um, but there we go. Very possibly we'll be getting some more news very soon. Okay, one last bit of news now, and Finding Nemo was released on Blu-ray for the first time in the US this past Tuesday, and it is now available in a 5-disc Ultimate Collector Edition with a Blu-ray 3D, two Blu-rays, DVD and digital copy, as well as a 3-disc Collects edition including two Blu-rays and one DVD. So this is um, great stuff. I um, have been waiting for Finding Nemo for a long time and hopefully it'll be coming to the UK next year. I mean, we always get them late now, don't we? But um, there we go. Uh, Finding Nemo is now out in the US and so go and pick that up if you're in the US. You probably have done. If you're interested in Disney Blu-rays, I probably should have mentioned this last week until really. But there we go. Um, Finding Nemo was released this past Tuesday, and um, so great, great stuff there. And that is pretty much all the news for this week. So, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Disney News Show. Do not forget to check out my latest Disney Classics DVD update, uh, collection update. That was out this week. A link will be just here. Go and click on that if you want to go and check that out. Also, don't forget to check out my Vinylmation Traders, link just there to my Chasing Vinylmation. Go and check that out if you want to trade any Vinylmations. Also, do not forget to follow me on Twitter. I'm at Corella Stokoe for all the latest Disney news, as well as just random stuff about me, anything like that. Go and follow me on Twitter. Um, link will be... where should we go? Up there. Um, and so, there we go. This has been episode um, 57 of the Disney News Show. For Sunday the 9th of December 2012, from me, Joe Woodington, aka Quell's Big Coat. I hope you've enjoyed it, and don't forget to leave any comments, questions down below, um, or send me a personal message, contact me on Twitter, anything like that. Um, I love hearing from you guys, and so that is good stuff there. Don't forget to tune in next week for episode 58 of the Disney Show, that'll be out next Sunday on the 16th of December 2012. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.